Y'all, I'm in my holly jolly Christmas mood. Um, I've got my little, uh, got my little shirt. He's making a list. Got little Christmas lights. I'm gonna put on a little Christmas apron so I can bake. And I'm bringing you a recipe from my childhood. This is very old. It's probably an almost forgotten recipe for orange slice cookies. Remember these little orange slice candies? We all had these when we were little. Remember those? I never really loved them because they got stuck in my teeth. Um, but these make the most wonderful cookie. We're gonna mix it with nuts and raisins and coconut and they almost turn out like a little cakey cookie. And they're very reminiscent of fruitcake, but they're much better. Trust me, I'm not a fruitcake fan. So come with me today and I'm gonna show you this really fun retro recipe that was my daddy's favorite. One of the first things I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to 375 degrees and prep a large baking sheet or cookie sheet with parchment or silpath. Okay, here's the cast of players. You're gonna need a cup and a half of light brown sugar, two and a half cups of sifted all-purpose flour, three-fourths of a cup of butter, that's a stick and a half, uh, one cup of walnuts, one cup of raisins, one cup of your sliced orange slice candies, two cups of sweetened coconut, one third of a cup of what my grandma calls rich milk, uh, that can be half and half or whole milk, one half teaspoon of salt. You need a, another little bowl that's got um, one third of a cup of, we're gonna have this boiling, it's gotta be boiling water and in that, we're gonna put one half a teaspoon of baking soda, another little uh, two tablespoons of cold water, two eggs, and two teaspoons of vanilla. All right, let's get going. I'm gonna tell you probably the most time consuming and difficult part of this recipe is just cutting the orange slice candies. You're gonna want these small about like the size of a raisin. Now, in my years of experience of making these cookies, um, I have found what probably works best for me is to get a cup of really hot water and a pair of scissors. You can actually cut these with a knife on a cutting board, but the knife will get sticky and you'll have to keep figuring out a way to dip it in water or flour. And for me, I think it's just faster to use a pair of scissors and dip them after every chop or two. So what I do is I cut each little orange slice candy, whoops, into like five little sections. So just dip between each one and off you go. Now the bags of candies I bought had like 7.5 ounces. So I bought two bags and I'm gonna use a few from the second bag. I may actually use a little bit more than one cup. I will tell you guys that my dad loved these so much and when I grew up and, and moved away from home, uh, you know, I was an adult, he was an adult. I didn't ever really know what to get him. So one year it occurred to me to just, I always like to make gifts for people anyway. And it just occurred to me that my mom never made these for him much anymore. So every year in January, which was his birthday, I would make a big double batch of these cookies because I knew some of the family would want them too because they're, they're part of our heritage. And I would put one half of the recipe in a big white box lined with tissue paper. Now my dad, he coveted these so much and it's not that he didn't want to share, but he, he wanted to keep these and savor them so he would hide them in that box lined with tissue in his underwear drawer. And he thought nobody knew, but my mom knew and she told me and he treasured those. Oh, you guys, how I wouldn't give anything to make a batch for him right now. I miss my daddy so much. He was a pretty special guy. As I told y'all, he was a musician. He was a fiddle player. 
And speaking of oranges, he could play Orange Blossom Special. And you guys, you would think that a, a train was coming right through the house where he was playing. It tickled us so much. He'd plink those strings. He was just an amazing fiddle player and pretty sweet daddy. Okay, that went bad and that went pretty quick, right? I love this big mixing bowl. I got it at a little store here in Brenham. So now in a big bowl, I have put my cup and a half of brown sugar and my stick and a half, that's three quarters of a cup of butter. And I wanna mix those really well together. Remember your butter should be room temperature, so it's, it's pretty soft. And you're gonna cream those together till they're light and fluffy. Now, while you weren't looking, I cracked my two eggs into a bowl and I'm gonna put those in with the sugar and the butter and mix again. And this, this is what that mixture looks like. It's just light and fluffy. Now we're gonna add our vanilla and mix well again. Okay, here's our very hot water. It's, it's boiling. I just took it out of the microwave so it's not bubbling like it was. But you're gonna put your baking soda in with that and watch what it does, it fizzes up. We're doing that to just kind of help it go ahead and start getting activated. We're gonna put that in. We're gonna add our two tablespoons of regular cold water and our one third a cup of rich milk or half and half and mix those. Stop about midway through, scraping down your sides, because you can tell it's, it's thicker up there. You want to get all that down so all your ingredients are thoroughly combined. Now you're going to think this is kind of wet. Look at it. it. It is kind of runny, but that's all going to change as soon as we add our flour. So we're going to take our half teaspoon of salt and add it to our flour. We always do all our dry ingredients together. And I'm going to mix that in a couple of batches so it doesn't overwhelm my mixer. Scrape down your sides again, and then mix a little more. So this is what our batter looks like. It's really kind of thin. It's not like a cookie dough. It is actually more like a cake batter. It's really shiny and very velvety. See how beautiful that is? Oh. Now we're just gonna add in all of our fruits and our nuts. Two cups of coconut, one cup of any kind of nut you want. My dad's very favorite nut of all was black walnuts. Uh, he was raised in Illinois. So I don't, it's hard to find black walnuts and I actually don't love black walnuts anyway. They're kind of bitter. So I'm just using a regular walnut, but you can use pecans or anything you want. And then our orange sliced candies. And here we go. So you just wanna mix in all of those candies and fruits. So now we bring our prepped cookie sheet over and I'm gonna use a scoop like I always do because this is kind of a gooey mix. So we're just gonna take a little dollop and give them room to spread out, guys. 
try to make sure that you have an orange slice in every little mound. Then we're gonna stick those in our preheated 375 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Bye-bye. Okay guys, here's exactly 12 minutes. Look at these. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. Okay, I want you to see these are still pretty hot, and I'm gonna bring one up. Look, they're just like a, almost like a little tea cake, and they're really browned around the corners. That's when it's just perfectly done, but you just want it golden in the center. So I'm just gonna take these off and put them on a cooling rack. kitchen smells so good, so fragrant. Oh, we used to make these for Santa Claus. Okay, I'm gonna show you the bottom of one. Just a golden brown, but look at this. It's like a little jewel. It looks like stained glass, doesn't it? And then the insides, look at that. Like little shards of stained glass. Mm. You guys have to try these. They're crispy around the edge, buttery, cakey in the middle, chewy from the candy. Mmm, so delicious. So if you were looking for a special cookie that you think Santa might like, I promise you, he likes these. He's been eating them for at least 65 years that I know of. Mm. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy baking, and God bless you, and happy birthday.